If you guys are looking for super cheap and reliable coins, look no further than my sponsor, MuttReserve.com. They're awesome to work with. They got 24-7 support. Guys, don't waste your money on packs. Hit up the sponsor. Use code Poodle at checkout for 15% off of your entire order. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. We're going to be doing our first market talk of the Madden 21 season, guys. Now, this market talk isn't something specifically, like, exactly targeted at one thing. It's more so I'm getting a lot of comments on... Should you buy? Should you sell? Should you open packs? Should you play solos? A bunch of questions just regarding like, should I use my coins? Should I sell my coins? Should I do this? I'm gonna be going over a consensus of like kind of what my thought process is on the market so you guys have some kind of like at least train to follow here. So obviously things are a little weird on the market because just specifically, it's the first few days. There's a decent amount of, there's not like a ton of supply, but there's also really not much of a demand because most people who are playing the game aren't really trying to buy cards right now. A lot of people playing the game don't trust saving spending their coins. A lot of people are just grinding to get the highest coin count possible. A lot of all the noobs that will just buy any cards are not even playing the game yet. A lot of guys who are playing the game, maybe YouTubers who are just buying packs instead of actually doing things and then not selling them because they need the team to compete in Weekend League. So, market's kind of weird right now. So, you can't exactly take it at a face value for the most part. But, guys, before we get into the video and I go over everything, make sure to down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell, boys. Come join the family, give this video a big thumbs up as usual. And if you haven't already, guys, Comment down below. Let me know what you guys are doing with the market right now. Are you guys buying? You're selling? Are you just holding out? I'll give you guys a few of my my tips that I'm I'm personally like, I'm taking a wait and see approach. I might invest some, but I'm taking a majority wait and see approach for the most part. So if we come down here to quality, and we go down to, we have a decent amount of space here. So let's start with the highest overall. I think this is the best place. Actually, I'll stick to the 8081s real quick, just because the thing with these are these are the cards that you're gonna have a lot of. For the most, we're gonna have a lot of these now. These cards typically hold a decent value for a while because the issue with these cards, they're not like high movers. Like they may go up to 13K, may come down to 14K. Now the issue with these cards is I believe last year they held around a 9 to 12K value for a decent amount of time. But when the game comes out and we get better, better players, these cards kind of fall out of stuff. The only thing that holds them up is their training value. So honestly with these cards, if you feel the need to, if you need coins, you could sell. If you want them, you could buy. Uh, they're not going to move too much to where you'll be really disappointed with your decision. Now, as we get to the 88s, it changes because those guys can go from 100 to 200 to 200 to 100. So you really got to be careful when you're up there. Here, it's like you buy Dwayne Brown for a 10. He goes up to 12. After reduction, you would have made you you make like a thousand. Or you buy him at 12. He goes down to 10. You really only lost 1,500. It's really not the end of the world for anyone in those cases, but it does change as you get higher. So as we work our way up to the 82, 83s, now let me just describe the approaches. Some people come into this right now, they open their packs and they instantly sell everything, build as big a coin stack as they can. Not always the smartest thing, not always the dumbest thing. It really depends on who you're selling. So let's say you buy, you get a bunch of high overalls, you sell them quickly for 70, 60K. Game comes out, they become the meta, those cards get up to like 150. Good example, Lamar Jackson was going for 70K when I first got him. I was like, nah, hold on to him. People during the, uh, this period before they get their free one may want to use him. He skyrocketed up to about, I believe, 140 this morning. Now... I probably should sell him now because yes, once everyone gets a free one, no one's gonna want that Lamar Jackson anymore. It's probably a smart idea, so I'll probably sell him probably during this video actually. But let's move on up. Oh, but there's also the other approach, which is keep everything you get, see how the market settles, work it from there. I'll go over what I'm doing pretty soon. 82s again, similar to the 83s, they're not gonna change up too much. The only thing that may change is something that might be in a set or some players that get a new card, like let's say a new Pat P comes out with Mud Superstars and you want him for a power up. Other than that, other cards shouldn't change too much for the most part these should be pretty locked in um a guy like jair could get another card and he's pretty good his speed's good so he's the kind of guy that like you get him now he gets another he gets another card they have to power up he could go up value too as well pretty decent investments with that but where i start to worry is as we get higher up so the 84 to 85s are probably the last division of players that won't change too much before we start getting to the spots where things really start to just take a toll on what could go up, what can go down. Now, these guys, again, if you have some of the higher ones here, they probably are a good sell. Like, let's say a Grady Jarrett guy. Like, you can see, you see Grady Jarrett for almost 50K. That's probably a good sell just for the simple fact that he's not the best defensive tackle. He's good. Don't get me wrong. He's good. But he's really good, actually. He's an 87 power move. He's really good. I have him. I might even sell him. But the thing is, is that... He's a defensive tackle, and 50k is not where they'll probably they'll probably rest closer to the 34, 30k range where they really where they are like 35, 30, 40. Uh, the issue is training's gonna be expensive, so that should hold him up for a decent amount of time. But realistically, he shouldn't be there. Now let's get to the higher ones because these aren't exactly the most exciting things to talk about here. Let's get to the 86, to 87s. This is where things start to change. Do you guys remember there's guys that were like Richard Sherman last year who was really high, then really low, then back up. It really just depends on the state of the game. Now, point is with a guy like Grady Jarrett, a guy like Chris Jones is better 
and he's only slightly more expensive so you can sell Grady Jarrett upgrade here you wouldn't have to hold on to him and I think Grady Jarrett will probably fall down Chris Jones actually might end up being one of the best defensive tackles for a good portion of the year as far as powering up because his power moves higher his finesse moves high his speed's not great of course but the defensive tackle comes with the territory but I like Chris Jones I have him too so this is why I might sell Grady Jarrett look at your positions too like let's say you have Mahomes and you're getting a free Lamar it might be in your best interest to sell Mahomes we're gonna see his price of course as well Moving on down here, um, so some guys that could be big movers, so guys like J.J. Watt, when I first pulled him, I saw he was going for 60k, and I was like, I can't see an 87 overall going for 60k, typically the 87s and the 88s occupy the 100k to the 200k range, now here's the thing you want to wait out, you guys want to really think about, players who are going to be the best players at their positions are players you do not want to be selling probably right now, now, players that won't be, probably players you want to be selling, so like a guy like say Grady Jarrett won't be the best defensive tackle in his position, Price pretty highly maybe you sell thing with jj watt is jj watt's going to be one of the better players at his position maybe even the highest one of the highest overalls in his position he is good in the run game a decent enough pass rush good play wreck he's not the best at anything he has but he's gonna be one of the best guys and he's watt it's jj watt of course so thing with him is what's gonna really change the game it's gonna be weekend league when weekend league officially opens see seasons people don't care they're just rocking with the game feeling out when weekend league opens people are playing for coins they're playing for you know wasting time for you know technically money you're saving money playing for packs playing for competition that's when they're going to want the best players that is when the guys that are up here are going to start moving off the board guys like justin tucker for 69k last year justin tucker was 80 90k at launch um by the end of the launch he was 150 now again kickers he had a higher kick power than everyone last year not the same case this year things could change guys like julio guys like hopkins uh, guys like Hill. Now Hill's different because wide receivers actually sometimes go in reverse because you get the wide receivers as you know you can have three of them so they just go really fast and our level masters a wide receiver so people may not feel the urgency for them this year once again. Guys like Tyree Kill are always super overpriced at launch typically come down eventually you don't have to waste your coins on guys like him. Now a guy like Lamar Jackson let's look at Lamar real quick. If you guys have Lamar I highly recommend you probably go ahead and sell him once you get a decent price point for him. Issue with Lamar is I, how do you justify spending over 100k on him when most people have him for free? That's going to be the issue with him. Now, I'll probably put him up tonight for probably like 130 see if I can get him sold there. If I could, I think that's a great value. Could he come up when the thing comes? Maybe, but I just don't I don't see it. If everyone gets their pre-order packs, I feel like people who have him right now are just impatient and want to rock with him for the time being, and they'll probably think, oh, I'll sell him as well. I don't really know with that, but I, honestly, good thing I waited. That's the thing. When you first open packs, when the year first opens up, I really don't ever sell anything because I've seen people do that and just get you caught in a loop. And you really don't need those coins. In my personal opinion, you don't need coins the first week. You do not need immediate coins i rather grind my coins out than make the quick buck on the auction block because typically you end up losing coins and for what to say you have 500k sitting there never usually my typical move um so let's move on real quick to the final bracket i want to talk about which is the 87 to 80 or 88 to 89s this is the bracket where you really want to be careful with in terms of messing with players so here are the best players in madden ultimate team guys like zach martin now zach martin goes for 119 decent price now guys i'm telling you simple as this Weekend League comes out, people start realizing the run game's overpowered with some player that they have. Um, everyone goes out and buys some Zach Marcus that gets their line back up. Zach Martin becomes an overpowered player. Michael Thomas, honestly, I don't think he'll go up too much because of his speed. Uh, people realize McCaffrey's abilities, whatever he can get ankle breaker, is the most OP ability. He goes up. Here's where things change. I would be very careful with buying and or selling here right now. Um, if you have a hunch, I don't want to give you guys bad advice, so that's why I'm not going to tell you what to do here because things change. It, the Madden will dictate. It all depends on the meta, which we do not know yet. But Madden will dictate what happens here. So, Mahomes personally, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm going to rock with Lamar. Mahomes is a better passer, but Lamar's got that speed, which should give you a big, I mean, again, Lamar doesn't get a skate artist right away, though, so maybe Mahomes is better right now. But we'll have Lamar for most of the year, so I'll probably rock with Lamar. Um, if you have Mahomes, I mean, I'd probably take the, I'd probably take the money on Mahomes. Um, in the short term, Mahomes might be pretty expensive, actually, when the game drops, because people are going to all have Lamar, and some are going to want to change it up and go Mahomes very possible uh he's going for a good price guys like donald now guys like donald you can always if you really want to buy i wouldn't really i wouldn't really advise against it because he's a guy that you're going to keep all year but he may even go up guys because here's the thing if people love the way pass rushers this year and the game drops and they love the way it feels and they think it oh a good pass rusher will make a difference in weekly league aaron donald's gonna shoot up that's just the way it works so if you if you guys have a hunch on who you think will be the meta this year and what you think's gonna really rock this year those are the players that are gonna go up and i'm gonna invest in those and then if you feel like you know slow wide receivers aren't the thing as per usual um maybe you sell them before they go down now michael thomas is at a pretty low value to begin with training wise so remember also realize what the points of training are the bottom pretty much the way it works when it comes to training when the equilibrium is found there's the 88s up here the 88s down here 
these will come up to match towards the training value these will come down the best players will stay above like aaron donald because he's aaron donald the regular players will meet the equilibrium the worst will meet the equilibrium and then like it just like kind of the outliers will stay out of course but that's kind of how you want to look at it but guys it's better for the video kind of went long uh, longer than i wanted to be but i hope i did help you guys in terms of how you should be thinking my personal approach i'm the kind of guy the first week i save everything everything i do all the cards i get i wait on i make a few investments but coins wise i save everything my grinding coins. I haven't got to grind yet because I don't have the full game, so I don't want to waste my time for any videos. But first week, I save every coin. I don't buy anything on the auction block unless it's an investment. I don't. I don't buy to play with. I should say I buy to invest. I sell to. I sell to uh, be smart with it, but I do not buy to play with the, play with the players right now because I don't know what could come out. I got to see the legends first. That's another thing. Legends will change the market drastically. They drop a 90 overall mark sound again. All the running backs come down. It really just depends. It's the. Uh, it's how, it's how it works out but guys better for the video hope you guys did enjoy if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button turn on the notification boys come join the family give this video a big thumbs up and if you guys haven't already smash the like button can we get 250 likes in this video for the first market talk of the year be greatly appreciated you'll probably be seeing this around 6 6 o'clock p.m eastern time probably you guys got it enjoy the rest of your day night. peace